And tonight, in an exclusive Fox 10 interview, Jody Arias opens up about the jury's decision, sitting down with our Troy Hayden. Well, I don't know that I have a direct message for the jury. I know that um, I prayed constantly for every single one of them, so that's the jury that was brought to me. That's the jury that I was meant to have. That was Jody Arias speaking to Fox 10 just minutes after a jury convicted her of first degree murder, which of course opens up the possibility that she could be sentenced to death. Fox 10 has this story covered from every angle. Steve Kraft was inside the courtroom as the verdict came down. Mia Garcia and Anita Roman spoke to friends and family of Travis Alexander outside, and then of course the friends of Jody Arias. But we begin tonight with our Troy Hayden, who sat down with Jody Arias in an exclusive one on one interview minutes after she was convicted. Troy. John and Carrie, I met with Jody Arias only about 20 minutes after she learned the verdict along with all of us. She was shaken, she was crying. She knows she's not well liked and even hated by people all over the world. But we sat down and talked for about 45 minutes about one of the highest profile trials in the Valley's history. Just a couple of minutes ago, you heard the verdict from the jury. What are your thoughts? Um, I think I just went blank. Just, um, I don't know. I just feel overwhelmed. I think I just need to take it a day at a time. Was it unexpected, do you think, this verdict? It was unexpected for me, yes, because there was no premeditation on my part. I can see how things look that way, but I didn't expect the premeditation. I could see maybe the felony murder because of how the law is written, but I didn't ex the whole time I was fairly confident I wouldn't get the premeditation because there was no premeditation. It seemed, and you got a lot of questions from the jury, it seemed like some of those jurors didn't believe what you were telling them, didn't believe your story. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? I can understand that, I think, because of what I was, the lies that I told in the beginning to try to cover up this, cover up that, hide things that I didn't want to be known, made public. Are you focusing on the court, or are you focusing on what could be the, the worst outcome for you? Well, the worst outcome for me would be natural life. I would much rather die sooner than later. Longevity runs in my family, and I don't want to spend the rest of my natural life in one place. Um, you know, I'm pretty healthy. I don't smoke, and I would probably live a long time. So that's not something I'm looking forward to. Um, I said years ago that I'd rather get death than life, and that still is true today. I believe death is the ultimate freedom, so I'd rather just have my freedom soon, as soon as I can get it. So you're saying you actually prefer getting the death penalty to being in prison for life? Yes. Alexander family, uh, especially the, the two sisters uh, and the younger brother, if you could say something to them, what would you like to say to them? I hope that now that a verdict has been rendered that they're able to find peace, some sense of peace. I don't think they'll ever find the peace that they would like, but maybe they maybe they'll be able to have greater peace now or some semblance of it and be able to move on with their lives and remember their brother the way they wanted to and that was just some of our interview again we talked for about 45 minutes we talked about many other topics so more of that interview coming your way again at 5 30 and then throughout the rest of the day and evening john and carrie back to you uh, we'll look forward to hearing more about what she had to say. I know there were some astonishing things said in that interview. Much more coming up tonight on Fox 10 News at 5.30 and 6. And, of course, on Fox 10 News at 9 and 10. Just minutes after the verdict, Troy Hayden, the only reporter to speak one-on-one -on -one with Jody Arias. Troy was in the courtroom for the entire trial and was the only journalist in the world to speak with her right after the conviction was handed down. Troy, your thoughts? Well, I, I will say, first of all, I didn't speak to Jody Arias in jail. I talked to her in a holding cell down below the courthouse. She was taken there immediately after that verdict was read. I could tell she was shaken when I first walked up to her. I asked her if she was ready to do this. She said yes, and here's some of what she had to say. You uh, had some clashes with Juan Martinez. You kind of went after him on Twitter a little bit. What are your thoughts on Juan? Um, well... Prior to trial, I respected Juan as a very um, caring, 
capable attorney, um, even though he's done some very shady things in my case as far as hiding evidence and um, failing to disclose certain things, hoping it would just go away. But in the end, what does it matter? It didn't help my case. So if you had to do this all over again, you're in the desert, you notice that you've got blood on your hands, how do you handle it? I would turn around and drive to the Mesa Police Department. And what do you think would have happened to you then? I don't know, but it would have been the right thing. Do you have a sense of where the, the public feeling is about you, whether you're liked or not liked? I mean, I get the sense that there is great division on both sides, but I believe the majority is against me. So what are your thoughts on that? Um, a psychologist once explained to me that society has this need to um, persecute people. They get some sort of gratification from it, so there might be something going on there. Did you uh, have any knowledge of, you know, the interest in your case? Do you have an idea of how many people are interested? Um, I hear things, but I have no access to the news, the internet, that sort of thing. No direct access. What kinds of things do you hear? Um, I do get the newspaper, so that's been one portal where I've learned things. Um, a lot of inmates have come in to the jail since then, and they tell me um, they want to come up and shake my hand, they want to give me a hug, they want, to, they want my autograph. I'm not going to sign anything. Let's go forward. Say you do get a long sentence. How are you going to spend your life? I haven't decided yet. Now, she did tell me earlier that she preferred the death penalty over life in prison, John and Carrie, and said she did not want to be in one place, stuck in jail all this time. She'd prefer to be strapped on that table and, uh, and again, get the death penalty. Well, did she ever express sorrow and regret for killing Travis Alexander? Did she ever say, I want to tell the family I'm so sorry that this happened? The only thing she would say to the family directly was that she hopes this verdict gives them peace. And I asked her a couple of times, and that's basically the only answer I got from her on that. Now, she's not doing any more interviews. Um, to, your, your, your interview was the only interview she's done and will do because she's now on suicide watch. Is that right? Yeah. Um, because she made some tweets and because of some of the statements she made actually during our interview, I've been told by the sheriff's department that they have put her on kind of a psych watch uh, to make sure that she doesn't do anything to hurt herself. And during that time, she will not be allowed to talk to any other reporters. Troy, does that mean they move her out of the cell that you visited earlier on in this case? I believe so. They but have I, to I don't put know her in an in in isolated situation. Yeah, she said she actually had moved from that cell because they're doing some construction in the jail. And I said to her, I said, you seem like you had a, a pretty strong support group around you of those other inmates who were your close friends. And she said she's been taken out of that pod and moved to another pod because of all the construction they've been doing. So I don't know where she is tonight. But I do know there are some cells in that area where you're locked down for 23 hours. And the things you have access to are very, very limited, so it's very difficult for you to hurt yourself if you now, want to. Now, you spoke to. with her for 45 minutes, so yeah. much more coming up tonight at 6 and again at 9 and 10. What, what do you have coming up at 6? Uh, just a lot more. Um, I really can't give you a thumbnail. I'll be honest with you guys. My head is spinning. I've been going nonstop since early this morning. I'm going to get back to the editing room. I'm going to look again at what we have, and, right. and we'll have some new stuff for Sounds you. Okay. Sure. And only I spoke exclusively to Jody Arias after she learned her faith. Arias could now face the death penalty. And moments after learning her verdict, she told me she prefers death over life because of her statement. She's been put on suicide watch by Sheriff Joe Arpaio. And here's some of what she had to say to me. A couple of minutes ago, you heard the verdict from the jury. What are your thoughts? Um, I think I just went blank. Just, um... I don't know. I just feel overwhelmed. I think I just need to take it a day at a time. Was it unexpected, you think, this verdict? It was unexpected for me, yes, because there was no premeditation on my part. I can see how things look that way, but I didn't expect the premeditation. I could see maybe the felony murder because of how the law is written, but I didn't ex the whole time I was 
fairly confident I wouldn't get premeditation because there was no premeditation. It seemed like some of those jurors didn't believe what you were telling them, didn't believe your story. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I can understand that, I think, because of what I was, the lies that I told in the beginning to try to cover up this, cover up that, hide things that I didn't want to be known, made public. Are you focusing on the court or are you focusing on what could be the, the worst outcome for you? Well, the worst outcome for me would be natural life. I would much rather die sooner than later. Longevity runs in my family and I don't want to spend the rest of my natural life in one place. Um, you know, I'm pretty healthy, I don't smoke, and I would probably live a long time. So that's not something I'm looking forward to. Um, I said years ago that I'd rather get death than life, and that still is true today. I believe death is the ultimate freedom, so I'd rather just have my freedom soon, as soon as I can get it. So you're saying you actually prefer getting the death penalty to being in prison for life? Yes. The uh, Alexander family, uh, especially the, the two sisters uh, and the younger brother, if you could say something to them, what would you like to say to them? I hope that now that a verdict has been rendered that they're able to find peace, some sense of peace. I don't think they'll ever find the peace that they would like, but maybe, they, maybe they'll be able to have greater peace now or some semblance of it and be able to move on with their lives and remember their brother the way they wanted to. Now the next phase of the trial begins tomorrow afternoon. If aggravating factors are found, the case moves into a penalty phase where the jury could decide whether or not Arius gets the death penalty. You just heard her say she says she prefers that. We, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn in the above entitled action upon our oath. It's the verdict the entire country has been waiting for after months of graphic and sometimes X-rated testimony in the Jody Arias murder trial. It included an admission from Jody that she killed her boyfriend, Travis Alexander, she says, in self-defense. The jury makes their decision. Do find the defendant as to count one first degree murder guilty. Jubilation outside the courtroom, seconds after the verdict was read, and Travis's family and friends believe it's time for Jody to die for her crimes. If what she did to Travis does not justify the death penalty in America today, then why do we have one? Tonight, Fox 10 is the only news outlet in the country to talk to Jody Arias one-on-one -on -one just moments after she heard the verdict. I said years ago that I'd rather get death than life, and that still is true today. It took the jury four days of deliberation, about 15 hours, to decide that Jody Arias was guilty of first-degree murder. The eight men, four women, they did not buy her claim that the murder was in self-defense. For many, today's verdict was not a surprise. Many expected the jury to come back with a guilty verdict. And that includes Jody herself. Fox 10's Troy Hayden was the only reporter in the country to talk to Jody Arias just moments after the jury read the verdict, and he is live tonight with his exclusive interview. Troy, this took place right there in the courthouse, right? Right downstairs. Uh, and Carrie, I looked Jody Arias in the eyes just 20 minutes after she learned she'd been convicted of first degree murder. And as you asked, that interview happened in the holding cells that are down underneath the court building. She walked out, she looked shaken, she was crying. I asked her if she was sure she was ready to do this, and she said yes. And so in a rambling 45 minute interview, we went over a case that has captured the country's attention. A couple of minutes ago, you heard the verdict from the jury. What are your thoughts? Um, I think I just went blank. Just, um, I don't know. I just feel overwhelmed. I think I just need to take it a day at a time. Was it unexpected, do you think, this verdict? It was unexpected for me, yes, because there was no premeditation on my part. I can see how things look that way, but I didn't expect the premeditation. I could see maybe the felony murder because of how the law is written, but I didn't, ex the whole time I was fairly confident I wouldn't get premeditation because there was no premeditation. It seemed like some of those jurors didn't believe what you were telling them, didn't believe your story. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? 
I can understand that, I think, because of what I was, the lies that I told in the beginning to try to cover up this, cover up that, hide things that I didn't want to be known, made public. I don't know that I have a direct message for the jury. I know that um, I prayed constantly for every single one of them, so that's the jury that was brought to me. That's the jury that I was meant to have. So you, you pray for the jury? I prayed prior to trial that the right jurors would, would be on my, on my jury. So um, I just have to believe that those were the right jurors. Are you focusing on the court, or are you focusing on what could be the, the worst outcome for you? Well, the worst outcome for me would be natural life. I would much rather die sooner than later. Longevity runs in my family, and I don't want to spend the rest of my natural life in one place. Um, you know, I'm pretty healthy, I don't smoke, and I would probably live a long time. So that's not something I'm looking forward to. Um, I said years ago that I'd rather get death than life, and that still is true today. I believe death is the ultimate freedom, so I'd rather just have my freedom soon, as soon as I can get it. So you're saying you actually prefer getting the death penalty to being in prison for life? Yes. The uh, Alexander family, uh, especially the, the two sisters uh, and the younger brother, if you could say something to them, what would you like to say to them? I hope that now that a verdict has been rendered that they're able to find peace, some sense of peace. I don't think they'll ever find the peace that they would like, but maybe they will. Maybe they'll be able to have greater peace now or some semblance of it and be able to move on with their lives and remember their brother the way they wanted to. Just the way everything happened, um, I think that if I had just been honest from the beginning, I'd be in a different place. And so would everyone else. And um, because of what I've done, a lot of people will hurt for a long time. A lot of people who have talked to me about it have said, how could she have gone up and been with another man, you know, basically 24 hours after this? How were you able to put that behind you and basically go on a date? I don't think I so much put it behind me as I just sort of checked out. I hardly remember that day. Um, I don't remember it being nearly as intimate as he described. I remember falling asleep and taking a nap, and he was lying next to me. Um, I remember feeling it's strange, but I remember feeling safe. It's not like I went up there because I was hoping to pursue a relationship. I went up there because I thought, oh crap, I need to keep my schedule. So I went up there almost because I felt a sense of obligation inside in order to keep up the pretense, not because I was going off to have fun. So if you had to do this all over again, you're in the desert, you notice that you've got blood on your hands, how do you handle it? I would turn around and drive to the Mesa Police Department. And what do you think would have happened to you then? I don't know, but it would have been the right thing. Because of what I've done, a lot of people will hurt for a long time. What I hear from women a lot is if she was getting beat up, why didn't she call the police? That's probably what you hear from women who have not been in my situation and have been abused. Um, I think at that time, if I can put myself back in that mind frame at that time, my fear of calling the police is that I would be seen as overly dramatic or I would make an enemy of Travis and I really just wanted us to be able to be friends ultimately. Do you still think about Travis? Yes. In what way? Um, there's a lot of regret because I was really hoping to get a plea and avoid talking about all of the things that came out about him. Um, if we had been able to avoid trial, we could have avoided just the murkier aspects of his life that he kept hidden. And these aren't just things that came from my mouth. They're his own words, his own emails, his own text messages, the activities that he was up to 
photographs that show that as well. None of that ever would have come to light. It would have just been forgotten, and he would be memorialized as um, not perfect by any means, but somebody who was known to adhere to his morals and the principles that he espoused. But now the curtain has been drawn, and you can see the hypocrisy and everything that was there. And I regret that because I know that even though he was living the life of a hypocrite, that's not how he wanted to be perceived. And I think inside he really didn't want to live that kind of life. There were some parts of your story that were definitely backed up by emails and texts and phone conversations and things like that. But a lot of people had real issues with the pedophilia when that was brought up. Um, how do you respond to that? Well, again, I mean, he's fantasizing about having sex with a 12-year-old on a tape. That's a pedophile by definition. Let's go forward. Let's say you do get a long sentence. How are you going to spend your life? I haven't decided yet. So we've yet to see if she gets death or life. Jody's now on suicide watch at Joe Arpaio's Australia Jail. She'll not be able to give any other interviews for some time, and we have more coming up in about a half an hour. I talked to her about her, her Twitter page she set up, making eye contact with Travis's family. So a lot more coming your way in about 20 minutes, John and Carrie. Troy, many people have theorized that she went there with the intent of trying to salvage the relationship with Travis, and then when he would not take her back, then it went into a deadly murderous turn. Did she ever address that, what her reason was to go see him that day? The bottom line is she stuck to every bit of her story that she had in the courtroom, uh, from the gas cans to just getting there and having an abuse. You know, she said, again, that she didn't remember anything that went on with the stabbing. She didn't vary at all from her story um, when we talked about it today from the courtroom. I can't help but think that after all the lies that were told on the witness stand, that when she said she prefers the death penalty, over life in prison that she's hoping the jury will hear this and there's some sort of manipulation going on. And I know that a lot of people are talking about that on social media tonight, that they feel this is a manipulative way of maybe the jury will do the opposite of what she asks. Well, the jury, if they're following their admonition, they're not supposed to watch any of this, so they should never hear what's going on at all. But I wouldn't put anything past Jody, as we saw in the courtroom. She does manipulate people. I don't know if that's what she's doing now, but I know a lot of people are talking about it. Did that. you sense she really did want the death penalty over tough life to know. in prison? It's tough to know. I don't know her. I, I met her once in January, talked to her for about 45 minutes, and talked to her about 45 minutes today. Um, all I know is what I learned in the courtroom with everybody else. Troy, what about genuine remorse? We never really heard her say, I am so sorry for all of this and the pain I have caused so many people. I, I wish I could that. take it back. Yeah, I, I kept waiting for that. And instead, I heard uh, more about how she wasn't happy with her defense team and how things weren't brought right. up. And uh, I kept waiting for that moment of, oh, my God, I, I can't believe I did this. I just want to tell Travis's mm -hmm. family I'm so sorry. Uh, that didn't come out Didn't today. happen. Maybe I gave her some opportunities. next stage in the sentencing, maybe that will come out of Possibly. Jody's mouth. Troy, great job. You've Thanks, been covering Troy, this you. since the very beginning. And a uh, really interesting interview. Thanks for bringing us that. You got it, guys. The area is guilty. We found out today around 2 o'clock, first degree murder. The jury handing that decision down this afternoon. And then, minutes later, Jody sat down with Fox 10 with Troy Hayden for her only interview since being convicted. Troy jo joins us again with more of this exclusive interview. She looked in that moment crestfallen. Troy. She was upset. And let me set the scene for you uh, how this happened. I got the word um, just before the verdict was read that we were going to get this interview. Uh, it was in the works for a while, but I got the word we had to be at a certain place at a certain time. So I got down there, and we were ushered into an area underneath the courthouse, and basically it's full of holding cells. And I didn't even know that existed down there. They can hold up to like 2,000 prisoners during the day down there. We got down there. There were a lot of people walking around, uh, a lot of big detention officers. Uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio runs that whole thing down there. Uh, a lot of people, but deadly silent. Nobody was talking. And there was a, a group of, of men standing near one particular cell, and that's where Jody was. And so we, we walked back into that area. We were told to, uh, to wait just a few minutes. We set up our cameras, and then Jody walked out. And uh, when Jody walked out, she was, she was crying. She obviously had been crying. Uh, she looked pretty shocked. And I asked her if she was ready to go through with it, and she said she was. Troy, where, where were her attorneys in all of this? I uh, mean, did they sign off on this? I don't know. She didn't mention that at all. 
To be, to be honest, I didn't want to ask her. Uh, I figured she's an adult. She's down there. If she decided she wanted to do this, right. uh, let's go ahead and do Talk it. Talk a little bit about her demeanor. We've seen almost a cockiness in Jody Arias. She was 18 days on the stand. She kind of uh, mixed it up a little bit with Juan Martinez. Then she finds out the jury wasn't buying any of it. And they say, no, you're guilty and you're guilty of first degree murder. Was there a marked difference in just that cockiness maybe out of Jody Arias? Yeah, I, I didn't sense much cockiness today. I think she was a little bit in shock by what happened. She said she didn't expect it. I, I did ask her, we were talking about Juan Martinez and we'll get to that in just a minute, but I asked her, um, I said, I was surprised. I thought she was gonna be more of, of a, like a, a wilting, you know, crying woman when Juan Martinez went after her. And I asked her, I said, I was kind of surprised that you decided to go after him the way you did. And she said, well, I'm more mature now and I just decided to do it. So let's look at more of that interview. Did you avoid eye contact with Travis's family while you were in there, or did you make eye contact, and what are your thoughts on that? Um, I typically avoided eye contact. Travis comes from a family where they all sort of look a lot alike, so when I see their faces, I see Travis, and I see the man that abused me, and I don't want to look at that. You uh, had some clashes with Juan Martinez. You kind of went after him on Twitter a little bit. What are your thoughts on Juan? Um, well, prior to trial, I respected Juan as a very um, capable attorney, um, even though he's done some very shady things in my case as far as hiding evidence and um, failing to disclose certain things, hoping it would just go away. But in the end, what does it matter? It didn't help my case. His accusation that I was seeking fame is, is absurd. Do you have a sense of where the, the public feeling is about you, whether you're liked or not liked? I mean... I get the sense that there is great division on both sides, but I believe the majority is against me. What are your thoughts on that? Um, a psychologist once explained to me that society has this need to um, persecute people. They get some sort of gratification from it. Talking about Twitter. Was that your idea? It just became sort of an idea that I thought of in February, and we decided to go for it. Are you happy you have? Yes. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't say happy. I'm, I don't regret it. Right. What has it brought to you? Um, I think there's a little bit of satisfaction gained from being able to um, just impart my ideas and my thoughts and sort of let people know where I'm coming from. Whoever wants to look, I mean, you don't have to read it if you don't like it. You want to talk about Nancy? I don't think she's worth it. Juan, you also went after there. Yeah, I just found it a very highly hypocritical that he would point to me and call me the epitome of a liar when he has lied over and over on record in court. Your mom has been um, there for you every day in the courtroom. What are your thoughts on her? I can't talk right now. Is that the hardest part, thinking about your mom? Yeah. My mom and my whole family. <sighs> yeah, that's difficult. As far as my mom, I feel like I don't deserve her. She's been a saint, and I've not treated her very well. Now, that was the most emotional I saw her get uh, during that whole 45 minutes is when I started talking about her mother and her family. And we should note, John and Carrie, that Twitter page that we were talking about there has been taken down. Uh, we tried to look it up tonight, and Twitter says it is no longer there. Wow. Yeah, and as we pointed out, the uh, Son of Sam law kicks in as soon as she's convicted. So she cannot profit off of any of this from this point forward. And tonight, just minutes after the verdict, she's talking only to me. I just feel overwhelmed. 
I think I just need to take it a day at a time. Tonight, Jody Arias is under suicide watch at Joe Arpaio's jail, but before she was taken into custody, she sat down with me. She told me she'd rather die than spend the rest of her life in prison. Here now is more of my exclusive interview with Jody Arias done just minutes after she was found guilty. A couple of minutes ago, you heard the verdict from the jury. What are your thoughts? Um, I think I just went blank. Just, um... I don't know. I just feel overwhelmed. I think I just need to take it a day at a time. Did you avoid eye contact with Travis's family while you were in there, or did you make eye contact, and what are your thoughts on that? Um, I typically avoided eye contact. Travis comes from a family where they all sort of look a lot alike, so when I see their faces, I see Travis, and I see the man that abused me, and I don't want to look at that. You uh, had some clashes with Juan Martinez. You kind of went after him on Twitter a little bit. What are your thoughts on Juan? Um, well, prior to trial, I respected Juan as a very um, capable attorney, um, even though he's done some very shady things in my case as far as hiding evidence and um, failing to disclose certain things, hoping it would just go away. But in the end, what does it matter? It didn't help my case. His accusation that I was seeking fame is, is absurd. Do you have a sense of where the, the public feeling is about you, whether you're liked or not liked? I mean... I get the sense that there is great division on both sides, but I believe the majority is against me. What are your thoughts on that? Um, a psychologist once explained to me that society has this need to um, persecute people. They get some sort of gratification from it. Your mom has been um, there for you every day in the courtroom. What are your thoughts on her? and my whole family. <sighs> yeah, that's difficult. As far as my mom, I feel like I don't deserve her. She's been a saint, and I've not treated her very well. We talked for about 45 minutes. I've got more of that interview coming up in just a few minutes. I, I asked her, is she still religious in jail? Is she still LDS? Her answer to that and actually how she practices her religion and much more coming your way in just a few minutes. Now, we've posted clips from this interview with Jody Arias online at myfoxphoenix.com. They're being viewed from all over the world. Uh, and we put basically a whole bunch of clips together on there. So when you get there, you'll find that right on our homepage. So if you want to see more, go ahead and, and click on that. All right, more now on my interview with Jody Arias. She said she was surprised that the jury came back with premeditated murder for the death of Travis Alexander against her. She maintains there was no premeditation on her part. So here, look at some more of that interview. Are you focusing on the court, or are you focusing on what could be the, the worst outcome for you? Well, the worst outcome for me would be natural life. I would much rather die sooner than later. Longevity runs in my family, and I don't want to spend the rest of my natural life in one place. Um, you know, I'm pretty healthy, I don't smoke, and I would probably live a long time. So that's not something I'm looking forward to. Um, I said years ago that I'd rather get death than life, and that still is true today. I believe death is the ultimate freedom, so I'd rather just have my freedom soon, as soon as I can get it. Are you still practicing your faith? Um, I don't think I, I'm still a member of the LDS Church, but I'm not actively practicing my faith at this point. Um, they don't offer LDS services for 
maximum security inmates. I still have my scripture, I still read it, but it's hard to maintain um, an active status in the church when you're sort of cut off from it. But you're telling me that if you would have done things differently, do you, do you regret how you went about doing things after Travis was killed, after you killed Travis? Yeah, I think that I was just freaked out. Well, I know I was freaked out. Um, I didn't know what to do. I, did, I knew that I couldn't just carry on as normal, but I tried to do that. I tried to act that part until, you know, until everything came down on me. Just the way everything happened, um, I think that if I had just been honest from the beginning, I'd be in a different place. And so would everyone else. And um, because of what I've done, a lot of people will hurt for a long time. Now again, we spoke for 45 minutes and we've showed you a number of different clips, shown you a number of different clips, starting at five o'clock and then going all the way through the 10 o'clock news. What we've done is we put a bunch of those together that we've shown so far on our newscasts on our website, myfoxphoenix.com. About a half million people have watched them so far. Go to myfoxphoenix.com, you can see all of them strung together. And over the next couple of days, we hope to have more of this interview for you. Uh, I've gotten a lot of requests on Twitter for the entire interview. So we'll see if we can put that together for you in the next day or two.